Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me for this setup and how to for the game Furnace. A game for two to four players with a playtime of 30 to 60 minutes. So join me as we go through what will be a two player setup and uh, brief tutorial um, on the game Furnace of this sort of uh, engine builder resource management style game. So with that, let's jump right in. Hey everyone. So never mind the background, forgot to insert this piece in the original video. But to begin setup, have each player select one color of their choosing, taking all four auction discs, the token in the color of their choosing, and then each player should receive one capitalist card and one starter company card. With that, you're ready to begin the rest of setup. So now that each player has their capitalist card, their startup company card, let's go ahead and resume with the rest of setup, starting with placing in reach of all players the round counter. This consists of both the round board as well as the, uh, the dial one through four. Create currency pools with all the resources for your monies, your coal, your iron, and your oil and then keeping some space in the middle that cards are going to be drawn into. Next, each player is going to take resources in accordance to the top of their startup company card. So player one, or this will be the white player, let's go ahead and give them their markers, so white player, yellow player. White player is going to receive one coal, one iron, and it looks like the same for the other player. Select the first player in any manner that you choose for this game. Let's go ahead and give it to this player on the left. And next, take the company deck, dual-sided. You'll notice one side has the icons, nothing on the bottom row is grayed out, and nothing is at the top. Whereas the reverse side, which is the basic side, has the bottom row sort of grayed out and there is an icon at the top. You'll also notice this sort of uh, decorative information in the corners as well, indicating the basic side. So give this deck a shuffle, making sure that all cards are on the same side. You'll want to have the basic side face down when completing the shuffle and then go ahead and set it on top of that round, carter, round counter card. Make sure everyone has their bidding tokens as well. And in this two-player game, the mechanic is going to be a ghost player. So if you're doing a two-player game like this setup, grab the die from the box and one of the other available colors to use as the ghost player. If it's a three or four-player count, this, will, this die will not be used and will not be necessary. Furnace is a game played over the course of four rounds, with each round consisting of two primary phases, the auction phase, which has two parts, and the production phase. And the player at the end of the fourth round, who has amassed the most money during the game, is the winner. So with that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the auction phase, which starts with placing your auction discs and then resolving the compensation for the cards. So to begin with the auction phase, the first player should start by taking the top card, burying it into the deck somewhere, and then dealing out six cards in a two-player game. In a three-player game, you're going to deal seven cards, and in a four-player game, you're going to deal eight cards. So in this two-player game, let's go ahead and get out our six cards available for auction. So before going into exactly how the auction phase is going to work, let's go ahead and address um, one of the main caveats. First, a player may not, unless their capitalist card indicates otherwise, have more than one disc on a single card. Two, no number on a card shall be the same from any other player. These are the two primary rules that you must keep in mind during the auction phase. 
So once all players have placed their auction markers, you will then go into the second phase of the auction, or the second side of the auction phase, which would be compensation. Compensation is the icons at the top of the cards, and the player that has won the auction would get the card into their play area, but not take any compensation. So when planning your strategy for the auction phase, keep in mind that whenever placing your tokens, if you place a four on a card, you're guaranteed to win that card. Otherwise, you'll end up getting compensation. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what that would be like in real time. So as first player, let's say for example, part of my strategy were to convert this iron or steel into a production token. I may want to go ahead and put my one on this card, essentially relegating that, you know what, I actually want to only take compensation on this one, I don't want to win this card at all. Then the next player would go. Let's assume part of their strategy is to build up, um, I don't know, oil, for example, and they want to come all the way over here to make sure that down the line when they get this card upgraded, which we'll cover in a bit, that they can start getting oil into their production. Now in a two-player game is when you would roll for the ghost player. So the second player should handle that roll, roll this die, and this dictates which of the cards in the row that the disc would go on. This ghost player will always play its numbers one through four sequentially. So the roll is a one, this disc will go here. Now, no other player, example, player one or player two could not put their one disc over on that card. It has essentially been blocked. So to finish out the round, let's go ahead and just start putting some discs down so that we can figure out the rest of our strategy. Ah, now, if ever the number is the same, Keep in mind that even Ghost Player cannot go where a disc is already of their own. So you would then go down the line and placing it into the next valid position. So here, the next card was the next valid position. And complete. You'll notice that on this final roll, I rolled a six for the ghost player, which would have put their four over here, but it could not go here because a four already existed. So I came down the line, they already had a token, they already had a token, so this is where their disc ended up. So now that everyone has completed placing their auction tokens, it's time to begin resolving the cards. So starting with compensation. So the players that receive compensation will in two ways. One, receive the top row multiplied by the number of their disc. So example, white player here will actually win this card so they would not get compensation and the ghost player doesn't get anything. So in this example here, first, we're gonna go ahead and take ghost player off and white player is going to bring this into their play area. Resolving then the next one, White player is going to be the winner of this disc. Ghost player comes off, and then yellow player would receive compensation of two coal multiplied by their disc, which is three. So in this example, they would then receive six coal. Two, four, six. taking their disc back, and then white player actually wins this card. In the case where it's not receiving production, or extraction as it would be called in this game, and instead they're going to do a processing action, the multiplier for the processing action is a player may, if they want, handle this processing action as many times as their disc indicates. So example, ghost player essentially discards this card. So the first player, white player, may then take this 
process action one time. So I think they will, in fact, turn this steel into a production token. So we had production tokens off screen, so let's go ahead and put them in view. And so then they would take one production token into their uh, play area. Player two can do this action twice. However, they only have one available resource to complete the action, so they wouldn't be unable to do it a second time. But you know what? They're also going to convert a steel into a production. An iron into production, rather. And then taking their discs back, and this card actually gets discarded since Ghost Player was the uh, winner of the card. Since only white player is on this card, they would take it into their play area, like so. They were uncontested. Ghost player again wins this one, so <laughs> this would get discarded. And the player may, if available, convert multiplied by one, but they don't have any more iron, so this would just get discarded. And then lastly, yellow player takes this into their play area. Next, we have the production phase. Now, during this phase, there's no real player interaction, so you can resolve it individually uh, on your own just to save a little bit of time. So when going through that production phase, you're going to go through and resolve your cards. Now, in this one tutorial, we're not going to address the sort of variant of the play whereby it l kind of dictates where you place the card and then you resolve it from left to right in sequential order. The core game lets you resolve it in any order regardless of where your cards happen to be placed. So as I mentioned, in this particular tutorial, we are not going to go into that variant. We are going to stick to just resolving cards however you choose. So let's take a quicker, uh, let's take a deeper dive into now the production phase. Now, one caveat is that uh, I did not pay attention to my capitalist ability during that last phase, which was uh, whenever I get compensated, I consider my disc one higher. So whenever I was doing a conversion, I could have essentially treated my disc as one higher. So I forgot to do that, but uh, no, no big deal. It didn't really uh, change things or uh, apply things differently. So during the production phase, uh, the, the main caveat to keep in mind during this phase is that once you begin resolving any of your cards, so let's say you started to resolve this card first, you must complete its resolution in full. So let's assume for a moment, though, that this card were upgraded and you were able to resolve both rows. Once you begin resolving this, you could not resolve the first row, go over to another card, and then come back to this one. So that's the main caveat for production. The other caveat, of course, being that you do not have to resolve any of the cards you don't want. And if you are able to resolve more than one of your rows, you don't have to resolve any of them, but they must be resolved in order. So example, if this one were flipped and you didn't want to do this one and you only want to do that one, that is an option for you. So let's go ahead and do this in real time. Now, this part of the game, there's no player interaction. So each player can do this on their own uh, just to kind of save time. This main card is how you get things upgraded at the cost of one production and one coal, which allows you then to flip a card. So in looking at my play area, I'm gonna sort of figure out what my primary strategy is and what the best path of resolution is going to be so that I can maximize the money that I'm going to receive. So right away, it seems like I'm gonna resolve this card first because it doesn't really play any differently on anything and I'm just going to take the one resource into my uh, supply. Next, I think what I wanna do is I want to resolve my startup company card, beginning with taking a production token. Now that I have two production tokens, I can convert one oil into four coins, but I don't have any oil. Next, I'm going to take one production and one coal and flip this card. Now that that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and resolve this one next, bringing two more coal into my supply. 
and then I'm gonna finally resolve this one, selling this production token, taking five coins into my hand, and then taking three more coal into my supply. And you'll notice that this upgrade can happen as many times as you have the ability to do so. So keep that in mind when going through that once you start resolving a card though, you cannot come back. So it's not as though I could now come back to this card if I had another production token and then flip one of the other cards. So just keep that uh, small piece in mind when, when resolving your uh, production. But that's it to the production phase. Once all players have resolved, then go ahead and you know, reset your cards and, you know, however you wanted to toggle them off. If you like to rotate, I like to, you know, slide up or down just to indicate which ones I've done. So after the completion of the production phase, you would then go back up here, advance the round marker, pass the first player token, and then resume play, going back into the auction phase and then back into the production phase until you've completed all four rounds. After the production phase, if it's on the fourth round, then the game is over. All players will then tally however much money they have in their hand to declare the winner. So if there is a tie, if there's a tie, and so let's say all players have the same value, the player with the most cards would be the winner. If the winners also had the same amount of cards, then the player that had the most remaining resources of those players would be the winner. And that's it. That completes um, the setup and how-to for Furnace. So I'm going to go ahead and tear down the table or <laughs> put away the cards and bring you guys my afterthoughts. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that setup and how-to for the game Furnace. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into my afterthoughts, starting with the components of the game. It's when if you guys saw my unboxing video, it's it's a card game at its core. So really, there isn't too much to the uh, the components, but the cards are nice. The tokens and resources are all you know nice wood. So everything is is pretty well put together. So I've got no complaints about that. And even the box does have a um, have a vac tray in there to keep things relatively organized. So onto the gameplay mechanics. So this one w for me was really fun and, and enjoyable for, uh, for a small engine builder style game because that resource management aspect, and, and, and I say that because you don't want to end the game with an abundance of resources. It means that you sort of poorly manage your, your, your production line. If, so you've got excess stuff and you know there's really nowhere to export your goods to uh, in in this sort of age of, of the economy so you have to do it yourself so you know that that management of the resources as you're building up the engine is is really interesting and I, and I thoroughly enjoyed this uh, mechanic of the game because if you end the game with only a few resources, you probably did a great job. In a few of our playthroughs, um, I did have some table mates that ended up with almost an entire handful of resources because when they were going for the auctions and trying to get the right cards, I don't know if it was just poor planning or, or what, but they just didn't have the right cards to sell off the resources that was part of their actual production. So. Keep that in mind for, for this one as you are, are strategizing and, and trying to figure out which one you want to place your four disc on because that's going to kind of dictate which card you're almost guaranteed, you're really guaranteed to acquire and then that's going to really mandate how you're able to sell future goods because to sell goods it's on the, the upgrade so you really got to pay attention to how you're able to, uh, to sort of upgrade. So why is uh, is Furnace a game you may want to add into your collection? Well, because this one plays very quickly. And and even at, at four player, I don't know if we ever actually ran up to the, the 60 minute uh, limit on the box. And, and this is very uncommon. If, if a box says 60 minutes on the top side, I will generally pad an extra hour on top of that uh, just for good measure. But this one was was very straightforward and yeah there's a lot to uh to the strategy of it and you know figuring out which card is going to be the right one but i really do like that aspect of, of having a, a very strategic engine builder a little bit of luck because you know you gotta hope you get the cards that you want um 
and, and it plays, like I said, uh, in under an hour, even at a four-player count. Uh, the two-player count uh, definitely plays in, in 30 minutes or less. And in fact, at two players, man, I almost feel like there, <laughs> there needed to be an extra round almost because that fourth round, gone in an instant. So why is this a game you may not want to add to your collection? Well, um, if you're going to play this for two players, uh, in, in, and I played this one actually more with two players than with four, so at two players, that ghost player is very interesting because it, if that roll of the die basically uh, somehow managed to screw the same player every round without fail it was it was almost as though the the die knew what it was doing um so that can be frustrating if you're going for a strategy and then ghost player comes in and and on that final roll you know that four disc is going to go somewhere and for whatever reason it just kept falling on the same player so a player who might have otherwise gotten uh, a card with a, a number three disc will end up like say losing that card or, or, or what have you. So in all of my two player sessions, one or the other players, uh, player seemed to amass cards in, in much swifter fashion, thus kind of putting their production line more ahead. And it's kind of hard to come back from that. So bear that in mind uh, for a two player game of why you may not want to add it to your collection. Another reason I, on the higher play count why you may not want to add it to your collection though is, you know, look, the, the strategy can be involved uh, and, and at times even a little bit daunting to, to truly make sense of the right resources and, and such. So not that it's overly complex, but yeah, it may not be for, for everyone, so just gauge your, your table mates uh, as best as you can. So that'll do it for, for this one, guys. I Myself, I really enjoyed Furnace, and I'm, I'm happy to add it to the collection. Um, as I mentioned, I, I saw this one at Gen Con. Um, I, I think it was 2020 or whatever. You know, had a really nice showing. I didn't pick it up. I kept it on my radar, finally got it uh, on sale, picked it up, really, really enjoyed this one. So my, my personal recommendation is, you know, I can get it. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions about this game, please leave a comment down below. Happy to answer them as best that I can. If you've enjoyed the video, I do appreciate the support. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, everyone, until next time, thanks so much for watching.